We start with breaking news here on the plus a person dead after being hit by a car in South Nashville. It was around 630 last night on Nolansville Pike near Harding Place right there at that Walmart Supercenter where the mall used to be. Officers say the pedestrian apparently stepped out in very busy traffic. No charges have been filed right now against the driver that hit that person. We are getting some new details now about a shooting that sent two men to the hospital in the Madison neighborhood. News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis has been on this story for us all morning long. She joins us live from Vanderbilt. Kimberly, good morning. Any arrests in this case at this point? Steve, good morning. At this hour, it is unclear whether any arrests have been made in connection to this shooting. I have placed several calls with Metro Police, but I have not heard anything yet this morning. And around 8 o'clock last night, police responded to shots fired over at the Charter Village Apartments. That's on Rio Vista Drive in Madison. There is still very limited information at this time, and officers are trying to determine what led up to the shooting. Investigators have been working throughout the entire night to determine what happened. It's unclear if any guns were recovered at the scene or if police have any leads or suspects. Police say they were transported to the hospital as a code three, which is critical condition, but they are expected to survive this morning. We are working on getting more information, but if you saw or heard anything, you are around the area, give police a call at 615-74-CRIME. For now, we are live outside Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Kimberly Davis, News Channel 5. Kimberly, thank you for the update on that. New this morning, the man accused of violently attacking a couple is out there. Police say that Terrence Warren Jr. jumped a man and his wife on Jackson Street late Monday night, chased the man to Ireland Street, and then stabbed him multiple times. Warren took off after the victim's wife called the cops. Luckily, that victim is expected to survive, and police picked up Warren overnight. So now he is in custody, and he's charged with attempted Criminal homicide. Good work by Metro PD catching him. All right, now watch out for this guy, Harley Caffey, on the run this morning. He escaped the Bedford County Jail just before 9 last night. He's 20 years old, about 6 feet tall with brown hair and blue eyes. If you see him or know where he may be, contact the Bedford County Sheriff's Office this morning. The investigation is continuing right now into why in the world a southwest plane ended up kind of skidding into a ditch last night at Nashville International Airport. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres is live for us at the airport. This thing could have been a whole lot worse. I know when the first reports came in of a plane that went off the runway, it sounded a lot worse than it actually turned out, Matthew. But a few passengers were a little bit bruised up, it seems like. Yeah, luckily there were no major injuries, Steve. Eight people were taken to the hospital last night for minor injuries, so I'm sure by now they've all been released from the hospital. Now, I just heard from an official with Nashville International Airport minutes ago who says that a special team will be out here to remove this plane, to tow it away. This is the plane that veered off the taxiway and landed in the ditch. She says that team will be removing it, uh, hopefully later today, to prevent any damage from happening. But right now the FAA is still figuring out exactly what went wrong. This is Southwest Flight 31, which arrived here around 5.30 p.m. from Houston. And the FAA says after landing, the plane skidded off the taxiway and got stuck in that ditch before reaching the gate. And as you can see, Metro National Airport Authority, Metro Fire and EMS officials all responded to the scene. 133 passengers and five crew members were on board. And again, luckily, there were no major injuries. We are awaiting the preliminary report from the FAA. In the meantime, the, op the airport will operate normally today and all runways are open. Coming up at 730, hear from passengers who were on board of this plane. For now, we're reporting live at Nashville International Airport. I'm Matthew Torres, News Channel 5. Matthew, thanks for the update. A man is in the hospital this morning after being struck by an SUV in Franklin. Police said the guy was trying to cross Murfreesboro Road right there at South Royal Oaks Boulevard right there by I-65, a very busy area when he was struck last night. It's not clear how serious the injuries are. We're told no charges will be filed against the driver. The man apparently not in a crosswalk area. The 11 year old girl that was shot to death by one of her classmates over the weekend will be laid to rest today. Her parents spoke exclusively to News Channel 5. You can't even stand. You just have to sink down to the ground and you try to pull yourself together and tell yourself it's, but you just can't. Words, words can't describe it. So sad. 
Investigators say that Sienna Owens was at a friend's house in Estill Springs in Franklin County Saturday when a 12 year old boy fired off a 20 gauge shotgun in the garage, killing Sienna. Sienna's mom was shopping when she was told to rush to the hospital. And I knew it was something bad. Um, so when I went in there, I just shook her and shook her and tried to wake her up. And she was in a puddle of blood. And I could see her little hazel eyes and her lids were covering it. I knew it was real then. The investigation will now be handed over to the District Attorney General's office, who will determine whether charges will be filed or not. Sienna's funeral, meantime, is 3 o'clock in Winchester at the Moore Courtner Funeral Home on First Avenue. Today marks two months now since a fisherman, Greg Hawkins, was shot and killed. Apparently just walked up on a crime, wrong place at the wrong time. Hawkins was fishing with his daughter back in October in Smyrna when he apparently interrupted a burglary at the Mona boat ramp there. The family is offering a $40,000 reward leading to the arrest and prosecution of the killer. Here is a photo of a person of interest in the case. Officials say this guy pictured here is suspected of several car burglaries and credit card fraud near the area where that deadly shooting happened near that boat ramp. If you know anything about this case, contact the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office as soon as possible. And have you seen this teenage girl? 17-year-old Elena Welter was last seen at her home in Clarksville on Friday. If you have any idea where she may be, contact the Montgomery County Crime Stoppers 931-645-TIPS.